we're gonna go over how to get started using Twitter or X and how to blow up on this platform. These are all the strategies that I've employed to grow my Twitter from literally nothing to over 20,000 followers on Twitter. The very first thing that we're gonna wanna focus on is branding for your account. You don't want your account to look like some random follow bot that goes and follows literally everybody on Twitter. If you already have an existing social media platform or an existing social media brand, then your Twitter would be a reflection of that. So using myself as an example, I already am a TikToker and a Twitch streamer who does streaming and content creation advice. That's what people know me for. So when making a brand new Twitter account, this is exactly what I'm going to embody. I'm going to want to take the same username that I use for my other social media platforms and use the same profile photo. Just so that when people see the picture, Picture, they can immediately put two and two together and they're like, oh my god, yes, this icon equals cat. The second thing we're going to want to focus on is your bio because this is for Twitter SEO. What SEO stands for is search engine optimization. And what happens is when you go on Twitter and you start looking things up in the search bar, if you have these words in your bio, your account will actually be potentially one of the accounts that will pop up when people search for said thing. If you put like Twitch streamer, variety streamer, etc., in your bio, if people on Twitter look for a variety streamer, there is a likelihood your account would pop up. But if you don't have those words in your bio, your account will not get recommended to people who are interested in searching for said keywords. Another thing too is when you follow people and a lot of people will actually click your profile and read your bio. And if you seem cool and interesting enough or you if you have keywords that relate to what they're interested in, it's more likely that you're gonna get a follow back, which is why we really wanna maximize this bio here. Twitter is like LinkedIn for content creation and esports. So you do really want to kind of make it look professional, show that you're down for business, you know what I'm saying? So having a business email there would really give people an opportunity, especially companies who are interested in sponsoring you, a place to where they can go and reach out to you that is more professional than Twitter DMs. In the same regard, you also want to put your location in the location slot. Country is totally fine. You don't need to be more specific than a country. But the thing is, a lot of times when companies are looking for people to sponsor, right? Let's say this company only ships to the US. So if they don't know that you're a US based creator, they're going to skip you. At the end of the day, in these companies, it's a human being at the other end, scrolling through Twitter, digging through piles of creators to go figure out who they want to work with. If you make it hard for them to find your location, as in they have to spend more than 20 seconds, they're going to skip you. Another thing that you guys may not know is that you could actually add links in your bio alongside links in your link slot. So on Twitter, it's one of the only social media platforms where you can add more than one link. What I would do if I were you is directly link your Twitch account if you are a Twitch streamer or link whatever social media platform you want to grow the most. So third, tweeting strategy. What should you be tweeting on Twitter? What I recommend is tweeting at least once a day. What I personally do is twice a month, I will sit down with my little notebook and I will literally write down like tweet ideas and then schedule them out one a day. The first thing that I really kind of like to tweet is like little motivational, what I call shower thoughts. These are just like random thoughts that cross your mind that do fit within the niche of content you create. The second thing is hot takes. Those tend to do really well on Twitter. But again, keep in mind because Twitter does have a character limit, it is very easy to have your get misconstrued because you don't have enough room to put all of your context. So what I would do is always leave comments like further elaborating the point you make just so you potentially don't get people jumping down your throat. The third thing that I find that is super OP on Twitter actually is Twitter threads. So to make a thread on Twitter, you make a little tweet and then before you hit post, there's a little plus icon like next to the post button. If you click that, you can actually add a reply to your tweet prior to it being posted. And then once you add all the replies you want, when you hit post, they will all post together. Threads are really helpful because they are really good for impressions because you tweet your very first thing and then people have to scroll down to read all of your other comments be below that and then it just increases your impressions for that day. I also find that threads tend to be very very helpful for people some thread ideas. A lot of people do educational threads. I do little threads about like, you know, how much money I made as a creator and then I'll elaborate more on like questions people typically have about that. A lot of people, again, do like art tutorial threads, VTuber rigging tutorial threads. You could tweet about news related to the gaming sector, like a build guide for a specific Genshin Impact character and then elaborate more on the build. But these are all thread ideas that also tend to do really well on Twitter. A really long time ago, the Twitter algorithm was released and it showed that photos get a 20 times boost in the algorithm and links get a 20 times nerf. Photos do really well. Pictures of yourself, pictures of things related to your life as a creator, related to your niche. I would truly try to avoid shit posting though. So in terms of like 
what I would consider high quality photos as in photos that fit your niche that is relevant, including photos of your face or your VTuber model, that should probably be about 75% of the pictures you're actually tweeting out. And the other 25% could be like, cat photos or something. The go live tweets. Again, you should use your social media platforms and cross pollinate. So it is worth it to go and tweet that you're live on Twitter when you're live on Twitch. However, some strategies to make it look less spammy. One, attach a photo to it so that we get that boost, you know, that 20 times boost in the algorithm. Photos of yourself, photos of your VTuber model, even like a screenshot of the game that you're playing. Attach a meme, attach a GIF, but just something to it so that we can get some more visuals and it looks less spammy. And then add the link as reply to it instead of directly in the tweets. Basically, it would avoid the 20 times nerf from attaching links to it. What I would also do is delete that tweet after you are done streaming on Twitch to keep your feed clean. So that again, when people click your account, you don't look like a little bot spamming go live links all the time. And this is typically the pitfall where everybody falls into. Please do not only post Twitch go live links as in you only post the link and literally nothing else. Or even worse, you have the bot setting tweet on Twitter every time I'm live. It's okay if you didn't know, but now you know, so please turn that off because it does make your account look really spammy. At least 50% of the stuff on your page should be your own tweets. Now, follow strategy. What I recommend on Twitter, because again, it is so OP for networking, is to go follow creators that are within your niche. If you're a horror game creator, go and follow other horror game creators. If you are a Valorant creator, go follow other Valorant creators. But the big thing is you wanna make sure your Twitter feed and your Twitter circle is full of creators that are within your niche. Now, the second step is to follow creators that are one step adjacent from your niche. And what I mean by this is creators that you think are really cool, that you really wanna work with, but that maybe don't know you exist. But this is what Twitter is for and you can make them learn about your existence. Now, we want to engage. Engagement is super OP and this is like the secret sauce for Twitter to make Twitter really work for you. What I recommend you do is on your Twitter home feed, you could either set it to following or for you. So what for you does is it shows like your recommended, but the following what it does is it shows you the most recent tweets from people that you follow in order of the most recent tweet to the least recent. So you'll get tweets from like 24 seconds ago, one minute ago, two minutes ago, etc. And this is where it's really OP. Set it to following and then throughout the day, you know, just go on Twitter for maybe five minutes and just comment. Comment under the most recent tweets that you see for the people that you follow because now that we've built our following to people who you want to connect with, then when you're leaving those comments, they see those comments because when they make that tweets, they're going to see the first couple of people who are responding to them. If you're one of the first couple of people that respond, you will end up in the forefront of their mind and it's more likely that they will see your name and be like, oh, wait, who's this person? They seem really cool and want to build a connection with you. And you also want to turn on notifications for people that you think are really really cool that you really want to connect with so you can be exceptionally early to their tweets. And finally is building that connection and networking. So if you are constantly replying to people's tweets and you see that they are often replying to you as well and you're getting engagement back from that creator, that is a really good sign that maybe they're potentially interested in building a connection with you. If you see this happening really often, what I do is if I see a tweet that is relevant, I'll actually DM them about it. And I'll be like, oh my God, hey, I saw that you're asking for book recommendations. Here are a couple of books that I've read and my recommendations for it. I hope you'll like it. Like something really generic like that, relevant to something they've tweeted about. And I'll make it very open-ended with no expectation for a response, which is why it's like, oh, I'm just giving you some recs. You know, it is what it is. And if they reply, that's a super, super, super good sign that you can go build a connection. Another thing that I would do is a lot of times if they're a Twitch streamer, I'll also go find them on Twitch and just type in their Twitch chat so I can get that like engagement with them in their streams while still supporting the stream as a viewer so that they kind of see me, they know that I'm there and then slide into their DMs afterwards. But it's also really good for networking like that. And then finally, when things work, we want to iterate upon it. By now, you're probably been using Twitter for a couple of weeks, etc. Look back at your tweets. Which tweets did the best? Which tweets did the worst? If you see a certain style of tweet do really well, get more views and impressions and engagement than your other tweets, make more of those tweets. I cannot stress this enough, but if something works, keep doing it. Data never lies. When data tells you the numbers are looking good, do more of whatever got you those numbers. So if you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate it so much if you liked and subscribed because I am trying to push for 50K on YouTube. So hopefully we can get there soon. As of filming, we're at 29K right now, which is super exciting. So yay. And also I have a coffee in which I offer free resources like sponsorship guides, etc., for streamers and content creators. I also sell one-on-one -on -one coaching and written social media reviews on my coffee. I also have an Etsy in which I sell digital goods and assets for Twitch streamers. If you're interested go check me on etsy as well and i also stream on twitch three days a week mondays wednesdays and saturdays at 7 p.m pst so i hope to catch you guys there or in another one of my youtube videos peace